morning guys let's start our lecture by reviewing what we covered so far so basically we covered the basic logic operation which are the AND OR and the NOT those logic operation can be represented by a logic gate the logic gate is the basic building block in digital systems let's start by reviewing the AND operation the AND operation also referred to as all or, no, or a nothing gate because both inputs has to be high in order to get an output equal to high so both input are, both inputs have to be equal to one in order to get an output equal to one the schematic diagram of an AND gate is given here okay the OR gate is also called any or all gates because if any of x or y is high the output is equal to be high okay so if x equal to 1 so regardless of what whatever value of y x uh, the the output f here will be equal to 1 okay the lastly the not gate or the not uh, or the complement operation uh, is also called an inverter and it can be symbolized by this given figure okay guys the most complex digital systems such as large computers are constructed from these basic logic gates okay as such these three uh, three type of logic gates are called the most fundamental ones just to be uh, extra cautious here, when I say the AND operation can be symbolized by X dot Y, please do not mix it with the binary multiplication. And even here, when I say that I'm doing an OR, which is X plus Y, please don't mix it with the binary addition. This, this form will be translated to X or Y, okay? When it comes to the complement, it can be uh, formulated by saying that it's bar or like a complement here or an inverted, okay? Okay, we need to know how to build a logic circuit given that we are having the Boolean expression of that, uh, of that function, okay? As well as we need to know how to write the truth table of that logic circuit so if i give you a logic circuit i expect that you will be able by understanding the whole objectives of this module uh, to be able to write the boolean expression or the boolean function as well as to write the truth table and vice versa so if i gave you a truth table we need to know how to get the boolean expression and how to draw a logic circuit and boolean algebra as a matter of fact, is a very fundamental topic to understand. So let me give you an example from real life. So suppose that you are a mechanical engineer that, uh, and you want to design a logic circuit that prohibits the engine in a car from being started unless the driver is pressing the clutch pedal uh, while turning the ignition switch to the start position. So um, this information is being applied in Canada you know the the car will not start until if you have a manual car or a standard car will not start until you press the clutch pedal so the purpose of this feature will be to prevent the car from moving forward while being started if ever the transmission is accidentally left in gear okay so let's suppose that you know you are the like the engineer and we designate the status of the ignition switch okay by an operation called the start okay and the start here as can be equal to one which indicate start or zero to indicate run or off as well as we designated 
a status of the clutch parallel position by a vol Boolean variable, C, and remember, like it's a Boolean variable, so it, it can have an, uh, like a value either zero or one, where one indicate that the clutch pedal is depressed and zero indicate that the clutch, the pedal of the clutch is unpressed or in normal, normal position, an idle position, okay? So, as a mechanical engineer, you're supposed to write a Boolean expression for the, uh, the starter solenoid status, given the start switch and the clutch. And after that, you need to draw a logic gate circuit to implement that, uh, this Boolean function. Can we do that? Just remember, guys, you know, we go back and remember that we need the engine to start when both of them are running, okay? So that logic circuit is used to perhaps the engine in a car from being started unless the driver is a is unless the driver is pressing the clutch pedal while turning the ignition switch to a start position. So basically, our function f will be equal to s and c and can be implemented by simply an and gate where well, this is s and this is c and this is f in terms of S and C. Okay, so the goal from this example, if this is like a basic example, and the goal of from it is just to illustrate the benefits from Boolean logic. Okay, guys. So the Boolean algebra is the mathematical science when it comes to binary systems, and actually, Boolean algebra is used to reduce and simplify the logical function to its simplest form. So, let me give you an example. Let's, let's suppose that we have an expression equal to y, and y is equal to a b prime plus a prime, A prime, B plus A B. Okay? And if we would like to draw the truth table of this function, it's like, you know, like uh, this function has two inputs, so two to the power two, that means I have to have four possibilities. So I have A and I have B. And then I have to get the value. So, uh, fair, like I will have 0, 1, and 0, 1. And here I will have 0, 0, and 1, 1. So let's get with 0, 0. This will give me here for sure 0, okay? And because it's 0 for A and 1 for B, because 0 prime is equal to 1, is inverted. So that's 0. And this will give me zero again, and this will give me zero. So the answer will be here for y. The, the for, for the first case is equal to zero. Okay, for the second case here, I have a equal to zero and b equal to one. Therefore, what I have to do is first here, I have a b prime, that will give me zero, and I have this a prime b, this will give me one because a prime will be equal to 1, and B, I have it 1, that will give me 1, and this will give me like 0, because I have A equal to 0, and it with B, which is equal to 1, which will give me 0. 
So this will give me one, okay? Then if I go back here and I have a equal to one and b equal to zero, so this will give me for a, okay, So for A, I will have 1 and B prime, and it would be prime, B prime here in my case, B I have it 0, B prime will be 1. So this will give me 1 and 1, which is equal to 1. And this will give me 0 because I have A prime will give me 0. So anything with 0 will give me 0. And this will give me 0 again. Okay? So this is 1 for this case. And 1 and 1. This term will give me zero, this term will give me zero, and one and one will give me one, okay? So, so uh, zero or zero or one, this will give me one, okay? So, basically, it's equal to one. So, the, my expression, let me write it again, which is y equal to a b prime plus a prime b plus a and b can be if we looked at this this remind you of what do you remember guys if we if we, like if, if we said here like a, a uh, no y is equal to a plus b and i write the truth table of this i have a and i have b here and i have 0 1 0 1 and 0 0 1 1 and for the y remember 0 0 0 1 and 1 and one so this y is equal to this y in other words this function y is equal to this function here so basically instead of going and buying uh, a complement of b as well as buying a complement of a and then like an and for a and b and like instead of having how many terms of uh, here for y1 for let's let's name this y1 and this is y2 uh, here we have three terms and how many literal we have one two three four four literals okay four literals however here i have just two terms and two literals that mean y2 is a simple implementation of y1 so if i am a designer and one guy designed a, like a, uh, the a logical circuit using y1 and another guy used y2 i will go for sure with the design of y2 because it's cheaper for me okay so that's why guys we need to understand Boolean algebra. But the problem is we don't have any rules to follow so far. We understood that y1 is equal to y2 because we compared the truth table for both functions. Is there any rules, any theory, uh, theorems, any postulates to, un like to follow in order to minimize? The answer for sure, yes. So at your textbook, guys, page 47 we will go over today uh, uh, over the most common postulates and theorem for boolean algebra let me ask you a question what is the difference between a postulate or a theorem so basically the postulate is a fact or it's a law however the theorem should be proven using a law or a postulate so if we like here if we or anything with zero uh, the answer will be that thing so if i or x with zero the and the answer should be x if i and anything with one the answer should be that thing again so if i or x with one the answer will be equal to x let's go and dig deeper and prove all of the theorem that we have using the common postulates uh, as well as the, the the laws that we will understand so the basic postulates here is operation with zero and one so let's uh, let's take a look of that so i have x and i or it with x 
So the output C should be equal to X. If you don't want to uh, believe that, let's go and use the truth table in order to prove it. So how many variables I have here? I have just one variable. So the truth table will be, will have just two combination, two to the power one. Okay, two, two to power one will give me two. So I will have two combinations, which will give me zero and one. And zero will be always zero at any given time. So zero, uh, uh, or with zero, the answer will be zero. One or with zero, the answer will be one. So C here is equal to X. It's crystal clear that, you know, the value of X, the values of X and the value of C are equal to each other. What about oring anything with one? If I or anything with one, the answer will be one, regardless of what will be the value of that Boolean variable, okay? So, Let's prove it using a truth table. We have x will be like either 0 or 1 because it's a Boolean uh, variable. And we have 1 which will be 1 all the time. So 0 and uh, 0 or 1, the answer will give me 1. 1 or 1, the answer will be 1. So c will be equal to 1 all the time. Okay? So that's why x or with one is equal to one. What about the end? At the end, it's a different story. So if I end anything with zero, the answer will be zero, okay? So let's take a look at this truth table and try to prove it. Here, if I, like, uh, I have just one variable, so it's two combinations. So zero ended with zero, the answer will be zero. One ended with, with zero, the answer will be zero, okay? So here C, as you can see guys, C here is equal to zero all the time. As such, X ended with zero will be equal to zero. Will be equal to C, which C will, will be equal to zero in my case, okay? What about if I end anything with one? If I end anything with one, I will get that thing. So if I end X with one, I will get X. So I have X, it's zero and one, and I have one, which is one all the time. So zero ended with one, the answer will be zero. One ended with one, the answer will be one. So apparently C is equal to X at all combinations. That's it. Okay, guys, another presupposition here is the idempotent clause, which basically is if I or the variable with itself, it will give me that variable, okay? And it can be proved again with the truth table. So I have here just the same variable, two to the power one, which will give me two, two, two combination, zero and one. Zero or with zero, the answer will be zero. One or with one, the answer will be one. So as you can see here, guys, uh, the it's all the time, C all the time is equal to X as such X or X is equal to X. What about if I and the variable with itself, it's still the same variable. To, to prove it, uh, I and X with X here, zero ended with X will give me zero, one ended with one will give me one. So C here, is equal to x at all possibilities. As such, ending the variable with itself will give you the same variable, okay? Now, what uh, like uh, another theorem to be covered is called the involution law. At the involution law, if I invert the variable twice, I will get the variable. So, Let's take a look here. We, I have two inverters, and I want to write function t c in terms of x. So what will happen is x is inverted one time, and it's inverted an another time. So if you see double inversion, this will be equal to x. To prove it, I have here x 
and it is it will be like a boolean variable that can be either 0 or 1 b here will be the complement of x so if x is equal to 0 b will be equal to 1 if x is equal to 1 b will be equal to 0 so for c c will be the complement of b okay because look at this you take it one step at a time so the complement of 1 will be equal to 0 the complement of 0 will be equal to 1 in other words, look at C here, is equal at all possibility to X. Therefore, therefore, complementing the variable twice will give you that variable, okay? So what about another laws of complementary? So if I add a variable to, it, to its complement, it, it should give me, or if I owe it, okay? Okay, let's agree on something. If I, if you see the plus here, it's or all the time, okay? So if I say add or or, it's it's still the same here, okay? Uh, for this module. So if I or the variable with its complement, this will give me one all the time. Why? So I have here one, let's suppose that C here is equal to X plus X prime, okay? So the complement can be symbolized by either having a prime here or having a big comma here, okay? So it's up to you to use whatever, 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 whatever combination you need to use, okay? Okay, so, so let's take a look here. So I have X. So x uh, equal to 0 and 1, x complement will be 1 and 0. So 0 or with 1 will give me 1. 1 or with 0 will give me 1. So c will be equal to 1 at all given time. In other words, I will have 1. Okay? Now, what about if I and the variable with its complement? I will get 0 all the time. So let's prove it here. So here, guys, I have the variable x equal to 0 and 1, and I have the complement 1 and 0. And so if I end this, okay, 0 ended with 1, it will give me 1. Remember, because 1 has to be, uh, no, to, uh, to get 1 in the end operation, both inputs, ha uh, both inputs have to be 1, okay? And 1 ended with 0 will give me 0. So C is equal to 0 at all given time. That means C will equal to 0, okay? Using these laws, theorems, and presupposition, can we simplify this Boolean function? So let's assume here we have here F1, and we have here F2, and we have here F3. Can we, you know, like if F1 is representing a Boolean function to design a controller to indicate some kind of alarm and is being implemented, you know, by this expression, actually this expression can be equal to one all the time. So that means you are in danger all the time if we are applying it to the alarm. Why? Because if we... Uh, remember, or if we or anything to one, the uh, output will be one all the time. Like, let's assume this whole variable is equal to x, okay? So x will be equal to a, b prime plus d, all of them and ended with e. So x plus one, this will give me one because we already proved it. Now, what about this? Example for F2, so I have a b prime plus d and I have a b prime plus d prime. So if I if I say that x is equal to a b prime plus d, F2 can be rewritten as x plus x prime. So that's equal to 1 at all time. What about the F3. So F3 I see here like a lot of very literals and I see here literals, a lot of literals and I see here a lot of literals. Okay guys, 
So if I say that this is X and this is X, so apparently and here it's still like I will keep it C, D plus A. I will keep it like this. Okay. So I have X or with C, D and A or with X prime. So ordering a very like X prime with X will give you one at all time. So one plus whatever here in the parenthesis uh, on the bracket will give you one. So this will be equal to F1 will be equal to one, F2 will be equal to zero and F3 is equal to one. So instead of going and buying a lot of gates, we will just attach F1 to a VCC to a voltage and we attach F2 to the ground so we'll have a zero voltage at all time, okay? Another important law to understand is the associative law. So when it comes to the associative law, it's something similar to, the, to, to what we learned in, um, in middle school or in elementary school. So if we like, you know, like um, a Boolean variable is still a mathematical variable with a set that be either zero or one. So here I can associate that expression and I can say X or with Y or with Z can be written by X or with Y or with Z while I can or Y and Z first and here, here I, uh, I or X and Y. So to prove that we you will use the truth table, you know, uh, so the simple is clearly shown here. So here I'm oring X and Y first, then I'm oring it with Z to get the resultant uh, function and for the other side of the equality I'm oring y and z first then I'm oring it with x to get the resultant c again and if you need to prove it it's you need to just write the truth table so let's suppose here function c okay has three variables three variables mean 2 to the power of 3 that means I will have eight possibilities so possibilities okay okay eight possibilities I'm sorry for, for 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 this writing okay so the eight possibility will start by zero three zeros okay because we have three variables and will end up to one one and one so to write it here guys what we have we choose x to be the most significant bit and z to be the uh, least significant bit and we can see that this will indicate zero and this will indicate seven and we're going from zero to seven so we'll have eight possibilities okay so first let's like let's compute the or between x and y so x and y zero or with zero will give me zero zero or with zero will give me zero a zero or with one will give me one for this one uh, and this will give me one this will give me one because one or with zero will give me one so basically I will have one all the time here then after that if I or the resultant here with Z what what should what should I do is I have to do the following so I have to or this zero or with zero will give me zero and one or with zero will give me one okay and zero or with one will give me one so basically it's will give you like you know uh, ones until the end okay so what about if I or y and z first so zero or with zero will give me zero zero or with one will give me one one or with zero will give me one so the only time I'm gonna get zero it's at this possibility here because zero or with zero will give me zero and for the others I will get one and then if I would like to calculate X or with whatever I calculate here so what I have to do is to or X here with this so zero or with zero will give me one zero or with one will give me one and then I'm gonna get one so as you can see guys this column 
is equal to this column at all possibility. That's why the associative law is proven, okay? What about the associative law when it comes to the AND? So, as you can see, guys, I can AND the, the Boolean variables X and Y, then AND the resultant with Z and will give me uh, will give me the same output if I ended y and z first then ended it with x to prove it Let's take a look at the this truth table. So we have 2 to the power 3. So that means I have eight possibilities from 0 to 7 Okay, and so if I would like to calculate x and y so I should and the These two columns with each other and if I and them I will get this output and then I will end it with Z, okay? So I will get, like, I will end, end this column with this column. I will get this column, okay? And this will be equal to, okay, here there is a mistake, okay? So here it will be, like, you know, basically when all of them are equal to 1, this will give me 1. That's apparent. And if I did the opposite way, if I ended those two, variables first I will get this column and if I end this column with X I will get this column and at all possibilities here as you can see this will be equal to this because as you can see it will be equal to this so that means the associative law is satisfied the first distributive law is an important um, theorem to be uh, to be followed so basically if i have y ord with z and the resultant is ended with x it's something similar to if i have x ended with y and a, uh, and x ended with the, with z and the resultant is or together okay so to prove that in other words like you can multiply x with everything in the brackets so to prove that, let's use the truth table. So I have, let's suppose that I have function f here and f is equal to this expression. And I want to prove that f1 is equal to f2 where f2 is equal to xy plus xz. So what should I do? First, I have to take a look at those two functions. They contain three variables. That means eight possibilities. So let's uh, let's. Uh, let's write a table that include all the possible values of the input with their associated output, okay? So first I have x, y, and z from, this is from 0 up to 7 decimal, okay? So 8 cases. Now if I calculated the OR, basically the OR of these two variables will be in this column so basically you are just oring this is zero this is one this is one and this is zero because oring zeros with, it, with each other will give me zero and after that i should i will I, I i should compute the resultant from ending this column with x okay so that's what i'm doing here so basically, I calculated the OR, then I'm, I'm going to end it with X. So 0, and it with 0 will give you 0. 0 ended with 1 will give you 0. And 0 ended with 1 will give you 0. The only cases that will give you 1 each, uh, will be when, when X will be equal to 1 and Y or Z are equal to 1. Okay? So now, now this will be my F1, okay? Now what about F2? So remember F2 is equal to XY plus XZ, and the goal is to prove if F1 is equal F2, okay? So, so basically what we have to do is to add X and Y, and the resultant column will be like this, and then we have to add x and z, and the resultant comment, uh, the resultant column will be like this. And then we have to or these together. So ordering this together, as you can see, this will give you one and one and one. Okay. So 
the column in the red that represent F1 is equal to the column in the blue because at all possibilities they are equal to each other. That's why we have proved the distributive law. The second distributive law is a tricky one, but we have to use it because it's a powerful tool to simplify any Boolean function. And the second is the opposite, you know, of the first distributive law. So if you have x plus y z, you can it can be rewritten by saying that this can be ordered with this one and this can be ordered with this one. Both of them are ended. So that will be equal to x plus y and x plus z. To prove it, we will go through the same concept, okay? So first, we will say that this is F1 and this is F2, and we will make sure that whatever the column of F1 is equal to the column of F2. If not, they're not, uh, like they are, the distributive law is not proven. As such, we cannot, we cannot use it, okay? But apparently, like this column, is equal to this column at all time as such we have proven the distributive law okay let's approve the second distributive law in another way so this expression is equal to this expression by using the first distributive law okay so after that if i enter the x to the literals in the brackets, I will get x multiplied by x, where the multiplication here indicating the and, okay, operation, uh, plus indicating the or, xz plus yx plus yz. Then after that, what I have to remember, this x multiplied by x is equal to x, okay, and those terms will stay the same. I can take x here as what as a common factor so i will have here x and a bracket one plus z plus y and this will be equal to y z so this will give me whatever remember whatever ordered with one will give you one so this will be this all of it will be equal to 1 so x ended with 1 plus y of z okay so that's it guys this is what we are talking about okay so this is the proof of the second distributive law let's take another example guys here so if I have this expression and I want to simplify it and to prove that's equal to x, so what I can do here, like I can take x as a common factor and y plus y prime, this will give you one all time and anything multiplied by, any variable multiplied by one will give you x. I will give you that variable so this will be equal to x. Another example here, x plus x, y, is equal to x is by taking x as a common factor y ordered with one will give you one at all time so that will be equal to x another important theorem to follow here uh, I have x plus y prime all of it you know uh, ended with y so what I have to is equal to x, y, how to prove it. So let's, you know, let's multiply y by x and y by y prime. So remember, if I multiply the variable with its complement, that will give you zero. So that's equal to x, y. Okay. Another example here is x plus y and um, x plus y prime, this will give you x. How to prove that? That's it. So what we have to do is to multiply x by x and x by y prime 
and multiply y by x and y by y prime. Okay, so after that, this is x, still x, x multiplied by x will give you x, and the y multiplied by y prime, this will give you zero, and then here I can take x as a common factor, and then it will be equal to one, so x multiplied by one or x and one will give you x, x plus x will give you x, okay? Okay, now what about this one? That is x, how, how come this is x, guys? Okay, so this is, if I, if I multiply this with x and this is with, with x, that will be equal to x, x plus x, y. Now I can take x as a common factor. Anything plus y will give you one, okay? Or anything or with one will give you one. And then I will have x, okay? If you want any, like, you know, if you want, uh, like, an, uh, an example using the second distributive law, let's take a look. So this, how can be rewritten using the second distributive law? The second distributive law will say that I can take, okay, I see that I have y and the y complement. So I can say that I have here, I can say it's y plus y prime multiplied by y plus x. So this will give you 1, and then you have y plus x, and y plus x is equal to x plus y, okay? Okay, so let me give you uh, uh, a more complicated example. Let, let's suppose we want to simplify function w, and let's see how many uh, literal function w has. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, no, we already counted. We already counted, we already counted, we already counted, we already, so it has about six literals, literally. Okay, so how we can simplify it? Sometimes you need to play it smart and to substitute those long expressions into one variable to make sure that you are in control. So if we assume that x is equal to this, okay, and y is equal to r, plus s and t all of uh, so what will happen is i can rewrite my expression to this is x plus y prime okay and again that is x plus y so this apparently using the second distributive law what i can do is can I can write that right away is equal to x okay so and after that what I can say is that rem remind myself that x is equal to m plus n prime plus b so w is equal to n plus m prime plus Okay, let's take another example, guys. So imagine we have function f, and function f here has three variables, a, b, and c, okay? Function f has one, two, three, four, five, and six terms, okay? And how many literals? That's one, two, three, and that is four, that is, and here that is five, and that is six. Okay, we already counted everyone now. And so it has six terms and six literals, okay? So what is the literals again? A literal is the occurrence of a variable and uh, its complement. So this function f, has literally six terms as well as six literals and this function will cost me uh, this will cost me one and like if I have an and of uh, that has three inputs just one and an and with three input and then how many times like six of them 
six of them, then I need one OR with six input. So I need six ANDs with three inputs, six inverters, and one OR, in, uh, or gates with six inputs. Can I write this function or can I simplify this function? Yes, I can. I will use all the rules and theorems that I have learned. So what I can do here, guys, as you can see here, I can take a b, a prime b as a common factor, and then I will get c prime plus c. And for these two, what I can take is I can take a b prime, then I will get c plus c prime. And for these two, I can take a b as a common factor, then I will get C plus C prime. So this is will give me one, and this is will give me one, and this will give me one. So this function can be rewritten now to A prime B plus A B prime plus A B. So what I can take here, I can, as you can see, I can take A as a common factor, so and this will give me B prime plus B, so this will give me one, and this will give me at the end A plus a prime b. So how many literals, guys, I have? Here I have one, two, and three. So I have three literals. And how many terms? I have two terms, okay? So this functions can be implemented, uh, or can be simplified to be implemented by just an OR with two input and one AND with two input, okay? So the number of terms have been has been reduced from 6 to 2. The number of literals has been reduced from 6 to 3. That means this hardware requirement. Hold on a second. Is that correct? I don't think so because this can be further simplified by using the second distributive law. So you remember what's the second distributive law? It's x plus yz can be rewritten as x plus y and x plus z so let's apply the same thing we have here a plus a prime b okay so that is equal to a plus a prime and a plus b so what is that will be equal to? That will be equal to 1. So this will be equal to a plus b. So this whole function with six terms and six letters can be implemented with just an OR gate. Okay? As an exercise, guys, I want you to simplify this function f to its simplest version and submit your answer on Brightspace. Thank you for today and I will catch you very, very soon.